Hey guys, in this video I am going to be showing you the Foxtel IQ3 which is Foxtel's latest set-top box. This is what the front of the box looks like and it's obviously got a picture of the set-top box on the front there. Now if we flip this over and take a look at the back of the box, you can see the box and the remote control and listed on the back of the box are some of the box's features. For example, it now has built-in Wi-Fi whereas the IQ HD only had Ethernet. Uh, we've got a Bluetooth remote control, we of course have um, series link, remote record. You can record um, up to three programs whilst watching a fourth. Um, that's a slight improvement over the IQ2 which, or the IQ HD which only let you um, record two programs whilst watch, watching a third. Um, from what I've heard this box has eight tuners, they um, however are not all being used at launch. Uh, pause and rewind live TV. Um, we've got Foxtel Anytime, which is basically catch up TV. We've got the Foxtel Store, we've got Suggestions, we've got Start Over, which allows you to go back to the beginning of a TV show if you start watching it halfway. We've got Look Back, which basically allows you to download any show that has aired in the past 24 hours. Um, and you can record up to 345 hours of SD video or 172 hours of HD video. Um, from what I've heard, it's got a run to about hard drive, though Foxtel isn't advertising the storage capacity, they're advertising the recording hours. Now, if we move over here, I have got the actual box, which was inside of this box. And if we open it up, we should be able to see the Foxtel IQ3. So inside of this box, we have yet another box, which I'm going to put to the side for now. And let's take a look at the other contents. We have a Foxtel IQ3 welcome guide here. It is pretty um, nice actually, it's all printed in colour. Um, there we have some information about the remote control connecting to the internet. Um, so as you can see it's a pretty colourful user guide. We have got the residential subscription agreement and pricing guide inside of here also. Um, so yeah we've got that documentation. Um, I've basically got a letter here with instructions on how to return the old box. Um, if you aren't a new customer and you need to return an old box you should have one of them inside of the box. We have got a bit of a um, quick start guide here, it's funny, it's almost like a poster. They probably wanted to make it really obvious so people wouldn't, you know, um, miss it. Though it's basically got instructions on setting up your um, IQ3. If you want to um, read over it, you can pause the video. Um, and in here we have got an Ethernet cable. So obviously you have the option of Ethernet or Wi-Fi. I'm personally probably going to stick to Ethernet because I've got a, you know, a cable connection and I will get faster speeds over Ethernet. Um, and they also include a HDMI cable so they aren't being too stingy there which is good. Okay and that's pretty much it for this box. Now let's move on to the box which has what you really want to see. Now if we open this up, you can obviously see where the Foxtel IQ3 is there. We've got a bit of a um, comp compartment at the top here. And if I open this up, the first thing you see is the remote control, the Bluetooth remote control. And they include um, two AA batteries, which is good, two Philips batteries. Now let me just pull this out of the packaging. Okay, so now I have removed the remote from the packaging um, and inserted the batteries and you might see that the blue light at the top is flashing. I presume that this is because um, Bluetooth needs to be um, paired with the box, which I'm obviously not able to do yet. So this is what the remote looks like. I must say that it does um, look pretty stylish. As a bit of a comparison, I'm going to put the Foxtel IQ HD remote next to the um, brand new Foxtel IQ3 remote. And if we zoom in a little closer, the, you know, the button setup is, you know, of course, pretty similar. We still have the power button in the top right hand corner. We have the Foxtel button. On the new remote, we have a home button, TV guide and library, whereas the old remote had TV Guide, On Demand, Active and Planner. 
we of course still have these directional um, and select keys in the middle, you know, the volume and channel buttons are all the same. We still have the information button which was on the old remote. So at the top we now have an apps and a search button. Uh, we still have the back button, um, we still have the mute button in the same location. Instead of the help button, it looks like we now have some sort of favourite button, or I presume it's um, a favourite button because it's got a star. Um, if we move on down to the transit keys, um, it looks like they've slightly changed how the play pause button works. We have play on the left and pause on the right, opposed to pause at the top and play at the bottom. Uh, the record button still in the same location, so is the um, previous to next buttons and the stop button. Um, and underneath all the coloured buttons and the um, numbered buttons are still in the same location. So that is what the um, top of the remotes looks like. Now let me flip them over. And this is what the back of the remotes look like. And you might not be able to tell, though the um, Foxtel IQ3 remote is pretty thin, at least at the top. Obviously the batteries need to go in at the bottom. So it is a bit thinner than the Foxtel IQ HD remote. Okay, so let's take a look at the other contents of the box. Now this is a bit strange. We have what looks to be um, a SIM card, or the SIM card is missing. Though we have what looks to be packaging for a SIM card. So this is a bit confusing. It doesn't look like an, you know, a normal smart card. So I'm not sure whether there was a SIM card in the box or what the situation is exactly. Though that's um, pretty interesting. Uh, next up, we obviously have the Australian power cable, and I presume that this is the power brick over here. So the power brick actually um, says Foxtel on it. You know, it's not too big. It's you know, um, relatively small. Um, I can't remember whether the Foxtel IQ HD had a power brick, I'm pretty sure it didn't. Though obviously the IQ3 has a smaller form factor than the IQ HD. Um, so we've got some safety information here. And next we are up to the actual Foxtel IQ3 box. Okay, so I have removed the IQ3 unit from the box. Now I just need to pull it out of this protective um, protect this wrap or whatever you want to call it and this is basically what the Foxtel IQ3 looks like let me just remove the plastic on the front of the box it's always satisfying when you pull it off for the first time and this is what the front of the box looks like it says Foxtel IQ3 in the left hand corner and to the right we have a power button and I'm not sure if you can see it, though it looks like there's a bit of a circle there. Um, I presume that might be where the um, infrared indicator um, is for the remote control, or maybe it's a light. Um, it might not come up in the video, though there appears to be a circle of some sort there, likely with a light or a sensor behind it. Um, it doesn't appear that the um, front panel opens up at all, um, unlike on the Foxtel IQ HD, where it opens up to allow the insertion of a smart card. Now if we take a look at the back of the box, this is what it looks like. I have the cable variant of the box, therefore I only have the one connection for the Foxtel cable. The satellite version of the box however requires two cables I believe to receive all of the Foxtel channels. And the satellite version of the box also has an aerial input for free to air television. Um, as cable customers um, already receive all free to air TV channels, this is only necessary on the satellite version of the box. Um, so yeah, um, that's what that connection is for. If we look in, we have got the digital audio out connections. We've obviously got HDMI out. We have got a couple of USB ports there. We've got the Ethernet port. And obviously you plug in the power there. There must be a... All right, if you have a look down here, it says smart card, warranty void if seal removed. So on the um, old boxes, a smart card was actually the size of a credit card, whereas on the new box, it must be um, the size of a SIM card. So that's pretty interesting. That must be um, what the SIM card was for. So yeah, that's basically the back of the box. 
the side of the box so it looks like we have ventilation on the side there and it looks like we have a third USB port on the side here that's what the front of the box looks like we have another port on the other side of the box and if we take a look at the top we have another big port for ventilation there as well now let's um, flip the box over um, and I presume that's where the hard drive goes so I'm not going to um, open that up obviously as it says warranty void if broken or removed. Um, so yeah that's basically what the new Foxtel IQ3 looks like. So now I am going to set it up. I'm probably going to have to call up Foxtel to activate the new box and I will be back in a matter of seconds. Okay, so I have now set up the Foxtel IQ3 next to my PS4 in Nintendo Wii U here. So this is what the front of the box looks like and it's all plugged in and set up now. The only light that you can currently see or the only light indicator that you can see is for the power button on the right hand side. If you however move your fingers near the box, the lights will come on for the other buttons. Um, I find this to be a pretty cool feature because it's not even touch sensitive. If you just put your fingers near the box, they come on. So I'm not completely sure what technology they're using for that. So we have a TV guide and back button. We have a record button. Uh, we have the select button and the arrow keys and of course the power button. And if you press buttons on the remote control, you will see that little red light flash. And the one thing I love about the remote control is that it is Bluetooth. This means that you don't have to directly um, point it at the device. You can be, um, you know, holding it in any area of the room, pointing it in any area of the room. Um, and, you know, the box will obviously get your Bluetooth commands. Now, in terms of pairing the Bluetooth remote with the box, I also found that to be pretty cool. So in order to pair it, um, this is already paired, though so in order to pair it, you basically put the batteries in, press any button, and the light will start flashing blue at the top here. And when the light starts flashing blue, you simply hold the remote up to the box, and it somehow um, pairs the remote to the box automatically. So I found that to um, be pretty cool. So anyhow, that's enough um, with the box. I'm now going to show you the actual software on my TV here. Just let me get into a better position. Okay, so I have got it all connected up to my TV. The first um, section of the software that I'm going to show you is the um, home menu, which you get to by obviously pressing the home button on the remote control. I'm not sure if that's going to focus. So anyhow, this is what the home menu looks like. And we have got a few different categories here. We have suggested. So um, it's suggesting, you know, that I watch Wentworth, which is on right now, or that I watch Ned Kelly, which is on Foxtel Movies Action right now. We have got trending TV shows, which I presume is just the TV shows that are being watched um, the most right now by people who own the Foxtel IQ3. We have a highlights section, which is probably just hand-picked by Foxtel. And we have got a bunch of videos, um, instructional videos on how to use the Foxtel IQ3, which I need to get around to checking out. But they would come in handy if you're wanting to learn more about the device. Uh, next, we have the TV guide. We have still got the categories, which you found on the IQ HD. So we have the all channels category, we've got the free to rare category, the HD channels category. The one thing which annoys me is the channels 7, 9, 10, ABC and SBS category. It only has the five main free to rare channels. I really wish that Foxtel would put all of the free to rare channels in this category, such as 7, 2 and Gem, etc. I see no reason for them not to do this. Now let's take a look at all of the channels. Uh, so basically, this is what the um, guide looks like. Um, I find, you know, I quite like the design of it. I really like that you have all of the channel logos on the left-hand side. Um, I find that it adds to the interface and to the experience. And if you take a look at the left side of the screen, it says earlier and the right side says later. So if you um, scroll to the left, you can see programs which were on earlier. Um, that is basically the Foxtel, I think it's called the backtrack feature, which um, allows you to go back 24 hours in the TV guide and to download um, selected shows that you missed. 
and obviously you can go later in the TV guide to um, record shows which are going to be um, shown at a future time. Um, so yeah, that's basically what the TV guide looks like. Now you might notice that some TV channels um, have a different shade to others. For example, Channel 9, SBS 7 have different shades to, you know, ABC, BBC, etc. Um, to be honest, I'm not completely sure why this is. At first I thought that only the um, free-to-air TV channels were that shade. Though um, as I went deeper into the guide, I noticed that a few Foxtel channels were also um, that darker shade. See there, um, the Bane or the Bean Sports channel also has that darker shade. Um, and Al Jazeera has that darker shade too. So I'm not completely sure what that darker shade means. I might have to ask Foxtel about that or I'm probably going to ask them about that because I'm interested to know exactly what it means. Also, you might notice that um, some programs have what looks to be a little play icon next to them, such as Would I Lie to You, and it's got a little play icon next to it. Uh, if you look at the bottom there, um, it says Start Over. So basically, if, um, if a show has got that little um, play icon next to it, it means you can use the Foxtel Start Over feature. By using the Start Over feature, it basically means that you can um, click on a show which um, has already been on for half an hour, and if you start over, it will download the beginning of the show and let you start watching the show from the beginning, despite the fact that you, know, you might have missed half an hour. To activate the Start Over feature, you simply um, press the play button on the remote control. So as long as the program has that icon and you press the play button on the remote control, you can start that feature. So it says you are about to watch Would I Lie to You. This program will use approximately 1.4 gigabytes per hour. Um, and obviously, unless you're with Foxtel Broadband or Telstra, it's not going to be unmetered. Uh, the one bad thing about the Start Over feature is that if you're on a HD channel, using the Start Over feature will only show um, the show to you in SD and it looks like captions are also unavailable with this feature which is a bit of a shame. Um, I personally like to use closed um, captions for shows you know where um, the volume is pretty low or you need to you know concentrate you know such as The Walking Dead etc. Uh, so anyhow that's pretty much it for the TV guide. Now let's go back to the home menu. Um, after TV guide we have the library um, I don't currently have anything recorded in my library. I have, however, scheduled a few TV shows. So I have currently, you know, scheduled, um, you know, Gogglebox, Shark Tank and The Walking Dead to record. So you've got a nice um, sort of thumbnail view there. I can, however, go down the list and select list view. Um, so if you prefer to view it in a list, you can see it in a list, which is a little bit tidier, really. Now let's go back and apart from ske uh, scheduled we also have a rented section that I obviously haven't rented anything on the box so nothing is going to show there. Uh, next we have the anytime section uh, which is basically you know the Foxtel on demand catch up area. Uh, so we have highlights, um, probably just highlights that they recommend or shows that Foxtel recommends you check out. We have box sets, so obviously if you um, are subscribed to the box sets TV channel, um, you can go and select the show and watch um, every show, um, every season of that show that is available. We've got a TV shows section, a movies section, a kids section, a sports section. So, um, and you can also um, browse by channel. Um, so you might, there is a little bit of a delay with rating for the thumbnails to load, though it is unbearable, it's not too bad, though it does slightly take away from the um, experience a little bit. Okay, now we have the Foxtel store section. Um, and I also find with the re remote, um, perhaps I'm just not used to it yet, though sometimes I find that I have to um, push a button more than once. I'm not sure if it's because of lag or if I'm not pushing it hard enough on this remote compared to the last one. So we have the store, which obviously has different sections like movies, TV shows, main event, 
um, adult and every section has additional sections like new releases, highlights, etc. We have an apps section um, and as you can see I have got five apps here. Um, let's take a look at a couple of these apps. We have the Foxtel Tunes app. Uh, which is basically the Foxtel radio stations where you can listen to music though obviously they don't have um, picture to go with them. So this is what the app looks like. It's currently downloading the song data. Though obviously as you can see on the left hand side we've got all the names of the radio stations like V Urban, V Rock, V Pop, MTV Dance. Um, oh yeah, and it's finally downloaded the um, current song information there. And obviously clicking select on a radio station will just change you over to um, that radio station. And you click the Foxtel button to exit out of all of the apps. And if we take a look at another one of the apps, let's take a look at Sky News Redder Active. Okay, um, and it just looks to basically be the Sky News Reddit channel, though obviously you can interact with it. You know, get the national forecast, etc. Oops. And we have Sky News Multiview, Sky News Local, and um, Fox News Active, though I won't bother showing them to you now. Um, we have a search section, uh, so you can either do a search yourself or you can browse popular searches. And we also have um, the settings menu, I won't bore you and um, go through all of the settings. So anyhow, let's go back to the current program. So I'm currently on UK TV by the looks of it. The one thing that I really like is that when you start typing in a channel number, it actually gives you channel suggestions. Um, this is pretty good if you don't know all of the channels off by heart. So if I type one, oops, if I type two o, it would then come up with suggestions. So Fox Eight is two o eight, or that's the SD version of the channel. Or if I type one o eight, that would take me to the HD version of the channel. So I quite like how that search um, suggestion works, um, and. If you use the arrow keys, you will see all of the channel logos appear on the side and you can scroll up and down to, um, you know, basically change the TV guide um, to see what is on each channel without leaving your current channel. And you can obviously scroll sideways to see what is um, coming up next. Um, and you can use the info button to um, get a bit of a description. If you push the info button a second time, you'll get more of a full description. Um, and, you know, you obviously have the ability to record, um, you know, whatever is highlighted, etc. Um, so, yeah, that is basically how the navigation works when you are already viewing a channel. Um, so yeah, that is pretty much it for this video really. Um, I'm not sure if I have missed anything. I probably have and we'll think of something later. Though, um, yeah, if you have any questions about the Foxtel IQ3, then feel free to ask me in the comment section below and I will do my best to answer your questions. And thanks for watching.